Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. A couple of weeks ago, we studied the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And then we studied substitution and identification. We did that because it's the resurrection season. However, before that series, I did a series with you called Growing Up Spiritually. And in that series, Growing Up Spiritually, I taught you about three stages of spiritual growth. And like I said before, those stages can be broken down into seven stages, 12 stages or whatever. We're not getting difficult or complicated or technical. Just trying to give you a very simple um, lesson. And I gave you three stages. The first stage is the baby stage, baby Christians and spiritual babies. The second stage was the child youth stage, which in general is the development and training and teaching stage. And then the third stage being the adult stage, spiritual maturity. And I gave you the characteristics of, of a Christian in each of those three stages. And most of the time, most Christians think they are more mature than they really are. I heard one teacher teaching on this subject say, whatever stage you think you're at, lower it one, go back one. That's probably where you are. You are probably not as much as you think you are. Now, of course, I wouldn't say that as a Rule across the board, but in general, it probably is pretty close. Well, now this week, I want to continue the study of growing up spiritually. And we're going to go into one very, very important area of study for the next couple of weeks, at least probably at least two weeks or more. We're going to study something that is very hard on your flesh. I'll warn you right now. You will squirm under this teaching, but you need it. It is absolutely necessary. And it's probably something you have not heard taught very much, if at all. And it is absolutely necessary and essential. And so as I get into this, you need to stick with me for the next few weeks. Even though you squirm and feel uncomfortable, it really will hit home right where you are. But this is so important for your spiritual growth. And to lay the introduction for this, when We were talking about growing up spiritually. I've said to you before, two of the very primary characteristics of the sinful nature, or you could call it the flesh or the flesh nature. Do you remember what I've said? Two primary characteristics of the flesh nature. They are. Pride and selfishness. Pride and selfishness. Now, they are related. Pride and selfishness are related. Pride is self-exaltation. Selfishness is putting self first. So you can see they are very similar, but there are some differences. And we distinguish them. But they're very close. Pride is self-exaltation and selfishness is putting self first or making self your priority. That's selfishness. Self is your priority. You first. Well, in the next couple weeks, we are going to study pride. Pride. And to be honest, I have not. I, let me say it like this. I have only heard 
one teaching that I can remember in my entire lifetime of going to church on the subject of pride. It was a series of lessons. It was more than one service. It was about three or four services where the teacher taught about pride. And that was really the foundation for this lesson. That's where my eyes got opened when I heard this probably 20 years ago. But I have honestly not heard anyone else really do a serious study on the subject of pride. And so that's what we're going to dig into. Pride. And let me tell you right now, you've got it. You've got it. Everybody does. Me included. But let me say this. Let me add on to that. You have a lot more than you think you do. This is another thing, just like growing up spiritually, most people think they're more mature than they really are. Most Christians think they are humble. Most Christians think they are humble. You would probably say, well, I'm pretty humble. Or you might say, I'm basically humble. Well, what's basically mean? Basically humble. I'm pretty humble. No, unless you have learned to recognize pride and purposely, intentionally crucify it and go the other way, you have a lot more pride than you think you do. You are a lot more proud and a lot more arrogant than you think you are. Why? Because, well, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but let me just say this. You have a lot more than you think you do. And so we're actually going to be doing a comparison between pride and humility. Humility being the opposite of pride. And we need to pursue humility. And I'll say it again and again, pride is automatic and natural to the flesh. Humility is not automatic and not natural. Therefore, it is going to be a purposeful, intentional, diligent effort on your part to Crucify pride. And that's what it is. Crucifying pride. And I think I said it already. It is not a one-time act. It is not even a once a day act. Unfortunately, it is a moment by moment act. And the fact is that in one moment, you could respond, speak, act in humility And in the very next moment, turn around and get in pride. And so therefore, it is a moment by moment act. But therefore, it is something we must be conscious of and aware of at all times. And it's because we have not heard much teaching about pride that we really don't think about it. We are not conscious of it. Therefore, we are not making the diligent effort that needs to be done to crucify pride. And so in this teaching, it's going to bring pride to the forefront, make you very much aware of it. And we're going to talk about how to recognize and see The characteristics of pride. There are characteristics of pride that you never even thought were pride. You never even thought about it as pride, but it is. And so we need to learn these characteristics of pride, purposely address them, be conscious of them and aware of them. And 
like I, even though I said it, pride is something that will never be totally crucified in your life, it is something that you can train yourself in to be more humble by practice. You by practicing recognizing the characteristics of pride and purposely intentionally crucifying it and choosing the opposite, purposely choosing humility. You train yourself in it, in humility, that is. You train yourself in humility. And remember when we talked about growing up spiritually, growing up spiritually and coming to maturity requires a training and a disciplining of your flesh, just like, and what I mean by flesh is not just your body flesh, but the flesh nature which is pride and selfishness, two primary characteristics are pride and selfishness, training and disciplining that flesh nature. And like we said, it's like a person entering the military going into boot camp and they go through a hard discipline uh, discipline for a period of weeks. A person that is training for the Olympics, they are putting their flesh through a training. It is something that you can train yourself in and become more proficient in it. And therefore, humility is something you can grow in only by purposeful practice and diligent practice. But it does, you can change and train that your nature more and more to walk in humility. So, Let's get started. What is humility and pride? That's where we start. What is humility? Humility, it actually comes from a root meaning of to lower. To lower, L-O-W-E-R. To lower. And that is to reduce arrogance. And self-dependence to reduce arrogance and self-dependence to make lowly in mind. It also means to lay low, to lay low. It also means to mortify the flesh. That is crucify the flesh. That's the flesh nature. Of course, you're not going to kill your body, but... You put your body under your control and mortify, crucify the flesh nature. And then finally, it means to make meek and submissive to God and to God's will, to God's word. To make meek and submissive to God, to God's will. To God's word. Humility is acknowledging that we can do nothing in and of ourselves. Remember, Jesus said many times, I do nothing on my own. I do only what the, I see the father do. He was very meek and lowly. He said that I am meek and lowly of heart. And so we follow his example. But humility is acknowledging that we can do nothing in and of ourselves. Everything we do and everything we have is all by the grace of God. Now, I'm sure that if you're a Christian listening to this, you will accept those statements. You will acknowledge those as true. And as much as we will acknowledge that it is true, we say, of course, that's true. We believe that. But it is in our moment by moment decisions, moment by moment words and comments that we say to people, things we do that many times are glaringly opposite of that truth. And so that's why we're going to talk about recognizing characteristics 
of pride and humility in daily life. Also, humility is entire dependence upon God. Entire dependence upon God. The fact that we would all acknowledge that we are dependent on God. The truth is that even in our daily lives, there are times when we act independently of God and self-dependently. It is fact. Now, what is pride? What is pride? Well, the root word again, the root meaning, I should say, is high. It's the opposite of humility. Humility is low, to lower, to lay low. Pride is high. It means to raise up and to exalt. And especially in regard to exalting self. Exalting self. Being high-minded. It is an overestimation of yourself. An overestimation of yourself. And of course, we know other synonyms that we have used for pride is arrogance and haughtiness. Now, I want to give you one more definition of pride that is very unusual and even strange. But this is a true definition of pride. It means to envelop with smoke. To envelop with smoke. You could say it like this. Things get smoky around you. Now, you think, well, what does that mean to envelop with smoke? Basically, let me, and we'll be saying this again, but pride is very deceptive. For one thing, yes, you do deceive others, but the biggest problem is that you are, are deceived when you get in pride. And I'll go into that in more detail as one of the characteristics later on. But I want to see how pride blinds you. When you are in pride, you are blinded. And that's what the application is to envelop with smoke. If a house is on fire and you're in the house, And it's full of smoke. You cannot see. You cannot see. So to envelop with smoke means you are in a cloud where you are blinded. You cannot see. Especially you cannot see accurately. I remember hearing one time a story about ships that were in a group, a fleet, I should say, a fleet of ships. I believe this was even during a wartime. And the enemy threw some kind of a shot, some kind of a smoke bomb, or maybe it was a real bomb, I don't recall, but on these ships. So these ships, a fleet of ships, then got enveloped in smoke. They couldn't see anything. There's smoke all around them. They could not see the other ships. And the first time that happened, they started turning course, changing course, trying to get out of the smoke. But what they did was they ran into each other. And they, of course, collided. And it dis- it really it defeated that fleet of ships. They started colliding with one another because they could not see and they were trying 
to get out of the smoke. And this obviously had to be before there were electronic instruments. But that kind of thing is what happens when you get in smoke. You cannot see. Then you are in danger. I read a book probably 25 years ago. And in it was an example. It was a Christian book. It was There was an example of someone in pride. It was an allegory. And in this allegory, the Christian man was climbing a mountain. That mountain, of course, represented the kingdom of God. Everything is allegorical, symbolic. And the mountain represented the kingdom of God. He climbed up the mountain and that was indicating he first got to the mountain. The bottom level of the mountain represents salvation. And then after he passed that level, he started going up the mountain that represented his spiritual growth until he got to the mount, the top of the mountain. He was in the glory of God in the presence of Jesus on the top of the mountain. Now there was the ascent up the mountain that was his spiritual growth and development. But then after he was in the presence of God, the Lord said to him, you need to go back into the battle because it wasn't, he wasn't dead. He was having to go back to the battle. And now he's got his spiritual armor on. Now his armor is all shiny. Now he is trained for battle. He's equipped. And the Lord was sending him back into the battle. And so that was to come off the peak of the mountain, go start going down the mountain where he could work with other believers that were on the mountain. They looked across on the plane, on the plane, and there was the enemy. The enemy camp was on the plane. And so that was the enemy they were trying to fight against. And other Christians like him on the mountain trained for war. They were winning this battle. They were doing really good. But after a while, the Holy Spirit with this Christian, um, well, first the Christian thought, we're winning this battle. Hey, let's just go down on that plane and just wipe them all out and finish this off. Finish this job off. And they, because he, he thought, We are just about victorious here. We've almost finished and cinched this battle. Let's just finish them off. Let's go march out there and wipe them out. Well, the Holy Spirit who was with him said to him, no, wait a minute. And then the Holy Spirit pointed in the other direction, an opposite direction off the mountain into some shadowy area on the plane in the other direction. And he said, look over there. Look in that direction. Well, this Christian man said, well, I don't see anything over there. It's, it was shadowed. And his armor was so bright. He was in the glory. And he said, give me something to cover my armor. So I can see. Now listen to that. Give me something to cover my armor. So I can see over there in that other direction where you're pointing. So the Holy Spirit gave him a garment that looked so poor. It embarrassed him. It ashamed him to put it on. It was almost like a poor man's cloak. It almost ashamed him to put it on, but he put it on over his armor and it, because his armor was glowing so brilliantly, that's why he couldn't see. Well, as soon as he put that garment on, he looked in the direction, the opposite direction where this, where the Holy Spirit pointed, he saw an entire huge camp of the enemy that was hiding to ambush anybody that stepped off the mountain, any of those Christians that stepped off the mountain, they would be ambushed from behind from this huge enemy camp that was hiding in the darkness. And 
the, he, the Christian man asked the Holy Spirit, what is that enemy camp? And the Holy Spirit said, that is pride. Pride. And then the Holy Spirit said, that garment I gave you is the garment of humility. It's the garment of humility. And only when you put on the garment of humility can you see pride. And yet pride is there all the time to ambush you, to take you captive. The moment you think you can do something on your own, you are taken captive, ambushed by pride. And that garment is the garment of humility. You can only see pride when you wear the garment of humility. And I'll continue this story tomorrow because there's a little bit more that I want to share with you. But I want you to see pride is very deceptive. And that's why it is actually one of the very deadliest things that a Christian has to deal with. You must crucify pride or it can destroy you. Well, I'm out of time today. Just choose to humble yourself before the Lord and before people. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.